Okay, so let's get started actually doing some modeling here. What I'm going to do is pretty simple. I'm going to create myself a box. So I'm going to click on box, and before I do anything, I'm going to go ahead and turn on my snapping. If I come up here, you'll find this button here. If you left click and hold down the left mouse button, you can switch different types of modes for snapping. I'm going to keep it at 3D snapping, which is why it says 3. I'm also going to right click on that, and that's going to open up my grid and snap settings. What I want to do is make sure that grid points is checked on as the snap setting, okay? So make sure you got grid points on and nothing else. Now I'm going to close that window. And you see as I hover my mouse without clicking or anything, I get this yellow icon that sticks to different parts of the grid. What I want it to do is lock on to the center of the grid, the middle point of that grid, okay? Hold down the control key and left click and drag out to make a perfect uniform cube, okay? And I'm going to make something like this okay so in order to toggle snapping on and off real quick without having to come up to this menu item you can use the S key S for snapping so turn that on and off with the S key I'm gonna be using that shortcut from now on since I already taught you how to use it okay I'm gonna hit J to get rid of those selection brackets I'm also gonna hit F4 to toggle on my wireframe on faces because I like to see that that's just the way I work you don't have to if you don't want to but what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna convert this to an editable poly so let's right click on this box and with the box selected go to convert to and choose editable poly what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over to my uh, front view over here I'm gonna select all the vertices and I'm gonna use my scale tool to kinda of scale this down I'm gonna select the top vertices and I'm gonna move them up to about maybe right here and just for now that's probably gonna change though I'm gonna move that down like that so I'm basically right now I'm in the blocking stage I'm blocking out the geometry of my object. So if I come over here to one of these side views, you can see I need to take these vertices and move them down to the corner, which is going to be about maybe right there. Don't worry about being super precise with the image. As long as you get it pretty close, it's good enough. And I'm going to move this over to the back like that. I'm going to take the front vertices. I'm going to move these to about right here. Okay. So I pretty much have that kind of blocked out. If I look in my uh, perspective view over here you can see what I have kind of the general shape blocked out right here now another thing I want to do is I want to make sure I got the width of this thing done pretty good because the front piece here you can see is wider than the back piece so to confirm this what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to go to my uh, viewport options and I'm gonna switch images from the front to the back and see that's what I want to do I want to make sure that I select all these vertices and I want to make sure that they match up with that back view pretty good in terms of the, of the overall width. That's really important because the front view doesn't let me see that too well, but the back view does. So I'm going to hit Alt and B to go back to the viewport background options, and I'm going to switch it back to my front view. Now, with that done, what I'm going to do is I'm going to block out the front piece, which is this piece here, which is this piece here that kind of flares out, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit 4 to go to polygon mode. I'm going to select the polygon there that's on the front. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to extrude it. I'm going to right click and I'm going to hit extrude. And there's two ways I can do extrude. I can either click on actual extrude or I can click on this little box over here on the left of extrude which opens up the options. So let me click on the little options box. And what's going to happen is you're going to get something like this. This little menu that if I go ahead and click and drag where it says extrude polygons, I can actually move this around inside of my active viewport. Okay, I have a few different options. I have this option where I could choose my group. I'm going to leave it set to group. I can also choose the extrusion height, so I can click and drag on the arrows to interactively change that height. Okay, I'm going to go with something like 20. Looks pretty good. If I look over here, in this view, I could see the polygon move to the front exactly where I needed it to. So I'm going to say I'm happy with that. I have three different options here. I can hit the red X, which cancels the uh, operation. The little green plus tells it to apply and then continue to extrude and then I can hit the green uh, check arrow over here that basically tells 3ds Max okay I'm happy with that leave it alone okay so basically I end up creating this now if this polygon is still selected what I need to do is kind of get the uh, shape here in the front so you can see here to make the polygon match with the image I have to scale this outward like that I'm also gonna go into my side view over here my right view and I'm gonna scale it up because that polygon looks like it should be scaled up so if I look at this from the perspective view should end up with something that looks like this 
kind of like this flare right there at the uh, at the front. Okay. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to edge mode by hitting two on the keyboard, and I'm going to select this top edge, control, and click the bottom edge. If you hold down control, you can add more edges or more whatever it is you're selecting to your selection. In this case, edges. So I'll select both of those edges. I'm going to right click to open up the quad menu and I'm going to use this connect tool over here. Now if I go to the options, I'm going to get these options over here, okay? These options allow me to change the amount of segments so I can add more edges to this connection. I can also uh, choose a pinch. Now the pinch isn't working right now because we need more segments. So if I add a bunch of segments, you can see that changing the pinch parameter makes them get closer or farther apart, okay? I also have a slide parameter which allows me to slide the edges to the left or the right based on the, uh, normal of the, uh, the normal angle of the polygon. So that can be pretty useful. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and set that to one segment so I can actually type in one and hit enter to do just one. And I'm going to hit the check mark right there to hit OK. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this edge and I'm going to move it forward a bit. Why am I moving it forward? Well, let me show you why. Let me go up here to the rendering main menu item up here. I'm going to go to view image file. This is a pretty useful tool as it allows me to bring up an image inside of 3ds Max so I can use this reference. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get this angle one. Okay. And that's going to open up that image in its own little window here within 3ds Max. And I can go ahead and use the middle mouse button, the scroll wheel to zoom in and out. I can also use the middle mouse button to click and drag and pan this around so I can actually examine different areas of my image and see if I'm doing things right, see if I catch any details to create in 3D. So you can see if I go to the bottom here, it's a little bit hard to see. There's a little bit of a bulge in the front. You can clearly see it here with this little blue panel. There is a slight bulge in the front. The front part actually bulges out very little. It's a very subtle detail, but it is there. So I'm going to minimize that. With that edge selected, I'm going to right click and I'm going to go to chamfer and I'm going to go to the options. Okay. What I'm going to do is increase the chamfer amount to something about like that. And then I'm going to increase the amount of segments. Now the more segments we give it, the rounder and nicer it's going to look. If I look at it this, from this angle, it's got this nice kind of arc to it, which looks pretty awesome. Let me go to my front view here. Now the amount of segments is a little bit high, so I might go with something a little bit lower. And let me change the chamfer amount to something like... Something like this looks pretty good. I don't know, maybe I'll go with about 14, something like that. So I'm going to say I'm happy with that. I'm going to hit the check mark there. If I look at this in my perspective view, it looks pretty good. Not too bad. Okay, so I'm going to say I'm happy with that. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select this back polygon. What I want to do, I want to take all of these polygons and separate them from the front area, from the front piece, okay? So that's going to be pretty easy to do. To select the back polygons, all I have to do is just go ahead and do a marquee selection over that, and it selects them for me automatically. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to separate this. I'm going to detach it. I'm going to use my graphite modeling tools or modeling ribbon. I'm just going to call it modeling ribbon from now on. I'm going to come up here to where it says geometry, and I'm going to come down to the detach tool, and I'm going to click on that, and that little window is going to pop up asking me a few things. It wants to know if I want to detach it as an element, as a clone or just as a separate object. I'm going to hit OK with none of these things selected so it separates it as a separate object. So if I go to object mode I can see that this object is one object okay, and this object is a separate object by itself. So it's two separate objects. I broke them apart. Alright? Good. Now next thing I want to do is take this guy right here the back object which is this big one. I'm going to go to the quad menu and I'm going to hit hide selection. That doesn't delete the object and only hides it temporarily. The reason I want to hide it is because I'm going to be working on this guy now and I want to have him isolated. I want to have my view clear of anything else so that I can work a little bit easier. But I'm going to do that in the next video. So I'm going to stop here and we'll continue in the next one.